Warning, warning. There's no one on this planet that can stop me. Hi. Hey everybody, it's Hannah Solik, the head of video here at Cinema Blend with Sean O'Connell, our managing editor, and we're here to talk about some very exciting DC news, which is... He's back. Henry Cavill is back as Superman. Sean, what was your initial reaction? Surprise! Because, you know, you hear rumors leading up to it of like, oh, he's back, but you never know really what you can believe or how much of it is misdirection, direction or, you know, um, the whole Shazam joke of you get his body, but not his yeah. head. Um, but it was cool. It was really cool to see him. And, you know, it happens so quickly that you, you know, have a hard time really processing some of the big nerdy questions that you want to have answered, like what suit is he wearing? And then there was a huge debate about like what theme song is playing behind him. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you don't even really think about all that stuff. You're just like, oh, Henry's back. So um, yeah, it was cool. It was very cool. You're really back. Well, we're gonna get into it and I'm gonna have you explain to me exactly what happens and answer all of those questions because full transparency, we are recording this. What is today? It's the 17th, it's Monday. I have not seen Black Adam yet, but Sean got uh, an early screener to do the press junket. So um, I will not be able to, I'm gonna find out in real time, I guess what happens, cause I do not you, know up until this point. Do you have tickets? You're gonna go see I it? I do, yes. I will be seeing it when we post this on Thursday night. I will be in the theater watching it. Be prepared. All right, so Sean. All right. Tell me what happens. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a post credit scene. Totally uh, end credits, you know, not connected to the story at large. Uh, in general, but okay. but yes, um, Amanda Waller, uh, played by Vi Viola Davis, has shown up in the movie earlier, and she's the one who kind of puts the JSA uh, onto Black Adam and says, like, you should go check this guy out, which is unusual. And I'll get into why that's unusual in a minute, because it's unusual what happens in the end credits, too. The, I keep wanting to call him The Rock. Black Adam, <laughs> uh, who is essentially The Rock, uh, has agreed that he's become the protector of this area that he is a uh, guardian of, right? Like, he, mm -hmm. th these are his people. He's back from wherever he had been in stasis uh, and is now going to be like, this is his place. And so she's like, okay, cool. This is Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller shows up on like a, a piece of machinery that floats into the sky and it's her on a video screen. And she says, okay, look, you've chosen Looking this place through now. through the sky? <laughs> yeah, like it's a, it's a, it's like a ship that kind of comes down, okay. but then the ship is really like, it's a screen and it's her okay. talking on the screen. How big is and this? She, I'm fairly big. Like a, I'm like imagining a, her on like a blimp. <laughs> well, it'd be like if you were at a football game and it'd be like that sort of, okay. you know, marquee screen that's in the middle oh, of the Oh, got it, got it, got it, sort of okay. Thing. It's big enough, you know, but like not like daunting. Um, and she says, okay, look, you've chosen to, to protect this place, uh, but now this is your prison. If you leave this area, um, you are going to, like, you're gonna feel the full wrath of, of me, essentially. Uh, and he says, well, we all know that there's nothing on this planet uh, that can stop me. And she goes, well, I have access to uh, people that are not from this planet kind of thing. And in which case the blimp football marquee explodes. <laughs> For oh. some reason, yeah, it explodes, <laughs> creating this like wall of smoke and Black Adam's kind of staring into the wall of smoke. And then you see like a silhouette. You actually hear it. You hear like the landing of, of Superman because uh, it sounds like a sonic boom almost. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see the silhouette start to come through the smoke. And he says, um, well, I forget the quote exactly 100 percent, but it's like uh, it's been a long time since somebody has made uh people this nervous and then henry emerges from the cloud um and, and then he goes uh black adam uh we need to talk sort of deal mm. so and then we cut to black <laughs> and, well you do get one more shot of the rock and he kind of gives a little smile um and then it cut, then it cuts to black so it's implied he knows who superman is yeah no oh. not necessarily um but he sees a guy who looks just like who built like Fair. him kind of thing, who is also kind of floating flying. So I guess okay. he's, but no, he, no, he does not close. indicate. Yeah, it does not indicate that he knows who Black, uh, who, who Superman is okay. uh, in any way, shape or form. Although I will say that throughout the course of the movie, as you will see, uh, there are DC uh, imagery all throughout, especially in the bedroom of the kid who is kind of like 
befriending Black Adam. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Black Adam kind of notices that stuff. Okay. Um, but you'll get scenes of like him punching someone through a wall that has like a Superman poster on it kind of thing. But I don't uh, think Black Adam sort of notices that. Okay. So um, what, what theme is playing? <laughs> <laughs> now, I swear it's the John Williams scene, and most everything okay. else confirmed on um, social media is the John Williams scene. But I've only seen it the one time, and if I'm being completely honest, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I honestly, it's because it's, so it's not like it. It's not like it blares out. It's not like it's um, a significant to me part of it. I was more focused on the things I was focused on were the color of his suit mm -hmm. because he's wearing a traditional blue and red and gold um, okay. suit. And so I was like, well, that's interesting because then it doesn't connect to uh, Snyder Cut, right? Which would have still had him in the black and gray. Because when Henry's uh, going through the alleyway at the end of Snyder Cut, he opens it up and he still has the black and gray on underneath him. Even more significant, which ties it back a little bit to the John Williams theme, I guess it would be, is that he's got the curl. He has the curl oh. on his forehead, which I thought was rad. I, I was like, Go back to that because I thought that was really cool. So, okay, when does Black Adam take? Like, I guess we'll get into this later. But I do have questions about the timing of the events of this movie that might sure. answer whether or not we're still connected, not connected to Snyderverse and all that stuff. But we'll get into that in our next section, which is what the heck does this mean for the future of DC movies? And Sean, I saw you tweet something today that said that yes. you had news. Tell me what you. Okay, so I had two interviews that I thought were significant, and one was with uh, The Rock, which we've run on our channel before, mm -hmm. where I said to Dwayne Johnson, do you plan at this moment to make the movie that is teased in the, in the end credits? Absolutely. That is the whole point of this, man. Thank you for asking that. What I really meant by this is a new era in the DC universe is listening to the fans. Listening to the fans. Now, yep. and doing our best to give the fans what they want, and maybe sometimes down the road, and I went through this in pro wrestling, is you can't always give them what you want, but you'll always know that we're listening. And in this case, with what you and I are talking about, I, I have <laughs> been listening, and I've been wanting to address <laughs> fans for years, because I've been waiting yeah. for someone to step up and address the fans and say, hey, we hear you. So yeah. finally, uh, after, um, Many months turned into many years uh, between myself, Danny Garcia, who's co-founder, our co-founder of Seven Bucks, who she has had a, she's been a big advocate in, Henry, in, Henry's, <laughs> in Henry's career uh, and been his manager as well as Hiram Garcia. We ended up with what we ended up at. And right. the whole goal and intention now is to this new era, new time. Now let's build out. They wanted me back for a reason. I need to find out why. Mm. Now, we know that DC uh, is notorious for teasing films mm -hmm. that don't necessarily <laughs> come to pass. I mean, we can talk about Lex Luthor and uh, Deathstroke teaming up at the end of a Justice League movie, both Justice League movies. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, this is just, this is commonplace. Um, but so then on Friday, I spoke with uh, Hiram Garcia, who is Rock's longtime producer who is responsible significantly for Henry coming over as well as mm. with, uh, Danny Garcia, who Danny Garcia reps Henry Cavill. And I said point blank to him, um, is Cavill signed up for more Superman movies? Like what's the story there? And he put on a little producer dance where he was like, I can't say 100% what Henry is signed up for, but um, we have grand plans for how we are going to use him we wanted this scene to be uh, a way to establish that these two characters are in the same universe and that we are very much fighting hard right now to make sure uh, that he is contractually signed up to do more Superman, more Superman oh. in the DC universe. So that's the news that I could break. He talks a little bit more and you can find the story on Cinema Blend about being on set uh, at the day of filming with Henry uh, and having him in the suit and everything. Rock was not there. Uh, Hiram had to call him from the, it was a London set. They probably went over because Henry was probably doing Witcher oh, yeah. at the time. And um, so those two aren't actually in a scene together. <laughs> so Aww. keep that in mind <laughs> as you're watching it. Uh, they didn't get a chance to meet, but that's movie magic. But yeah, currently right now, the Seven Bucks Productions is, according to Hiram Garcia, 
fighting incredibly hard to get all those things finalized and contracts finalized. Uh, and it looks like more Henry in the DC uh, EU. But it sounds like it's implied like with Black Adam, not necessarily, because like my main question is like, okay, does this mean like Man of Steel 2 is on the table? Like we'll get to all the Snyderverse stuff in a minute, but just like, sure. what do you so, what do you think? Yeah, I think personally, knowing absolutely nothing, that you would do a Superman movie first and build towards Black Adam 2. Mm. Um, only be for this reason. Like there's there's a, a certain amount of movies that have already been announced in the DC universe that we have to get through. It's going to carry us all the way through 2023 and into a little bit of 2024. I guess you could turn around really quickly and say like, no, Black Adam 2 is going to be one of those movies. And that might be the case. But I, because of how long it takes to develop these movies, I would think that you would slip a Superman movie and an individual Superman movie in there. Mm -hmm. And then that would allow you a little bit more time to build towards towards Black Adam 2. At the same time, uh, and I'm being a little bit jokey and a little bit serious here, there's no story in Black Adam. So <laughs> they very easily could just slap together Black Adam 2 and just call it like you know, Black Adam versus Superman. <laughs> And, and that's all they'll deliver. And then that may come in like 2024, 2025. Like this mm -hmm. isn't going to happen immediately. These things take a long time, but you already have everything announced all the way through 2023. Mm -hmm. um, even if you greenlit it now, like we're at the end of 2022, it would be 2025 before yeah. this comes to pass. Um, and so then if you think about it, if they do an individual Superman movie that comes out in maybe 2025, you might not see Black Adam for another year after that, right? Like 2026 mm -hmm. even. Um, and that's all, this all hinges on Black Adam doing well. True. You know, like the reason why those other DC movies didn't didn't deliver on their teases is because whatever movies they were being teased in uh, didn't didn't go anywhere. Yeah, even Shazam has a, has a tease at the end of it. The seven realms are about to be ours. <laughs> and that doesn't seem to be the plot of Shazam Fury of the Gods. So no, I, I literally rewatched the original Shazam over the weekend. I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot about this plot. Yeah, so did DC. <laughs> Do you think that the Superman and the Black Adam that we're seeing exist in the same world that, you know, Aquaman, like the Aquaman that we have seen up until this point, whether that be mm -hmm. Snyderverse or just the DCEU that's a mess right now, like, that they're trying to ignore the Snyder's Justice League and call the 2017 cut canon. Like, do you think this is happening in that same sort of world? Or do you think that this is a different timeline and maybe that that will get somehow clarified in The Flash from what you've seen no, from I, the movie? I think it's all happening in the world of the characters that we are currently playing around with. Interesting. Um, and I think that that could get altered in The Flash but otherwise, this would be your opportunity if, if it wasn't in that universe, uh, if it was taking place in a separate universe that maybe the Flash could access. Mm -hmm. This would be your golden opportunity to cast a different Superman. Mm. No, 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 no. Rock says that, like, we've been listening to the fans, you know, and the fans yeah. have wanted Henry back. I think he knows that if they brought in a different Superman, people would riot. Oh, <laughs> could you imagine? Crucified. <laughs> Oh, and that but poor actor. Oh my God. From a business perspective, it might make sense if you're setting up multiple movies, unless you're thinking, and this is why I asked Hiram Garcia this, unless you've got Henry locked in for another couple of movies, right? Like, cause otherwise, why are you bringing him into this end credit scene to be like, we brought Henry back, but it's really just for a glorified cameo. It's never going to pay off. Like he has to be signed up for something else. Well, there were, I saw something on Twitter too. Like he was in LA a couple weeks ago at the same time. And this is all like conspiracy stuff. So take this with a grain of salt. But people sure. were like noticing that Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill were all in LA at the same time that it was being reported that Ezra Miller was doing additional photography for The Flash. Okay. Which is gotcha. interesting to me. And I've won been wondering if we might get a Superman just like tiny little appearance in The Flash now that he is officially back and seems to be on better footing with Warner Brothers, but I guess we shall see. We shall but see, because this is I saw this from a totally unreliable source. A tinfoil hat. That did say that Supergirl, Sasha Cali's uh, Supergirl, is going to share a scene with Henry Cavill Superman in Flash. Oh, I, mean, I saw that on Twitter. I don't know how accurate it's going to be. Yeah. But like, 
yes, if you filmed a couple of scenes with Henry, why wouldn't you film something else while he's in the suit mm -hmm. to then use in the Flash? Yeah. Because if the Flash is supposed to exist as a Flashpoint kind of thing, then there are supposed to be looks into all these other alternate DC universes where you do see, you know, characters interacting. And it would, again, further this question that you're asking me, which is what universe does all this take place in? And I think that they all take place in the same spot. Now, you're going to get an opportunity in Flash to see another alternate universe where Keaton is the Batman. But from everything that we know, Affleck is in this movie. But then we also think Affleck's going to be in Aquaman, too. Yeah. The Warner Brothers, as much as they're trying to move away from, and this is going to pivot right into our third point, as much as they're trying to pivot away from the Snyderverse of it all, mm -hmm. they're really going you out can't. of their way to bring back all the characters, <laughs> all the actors that are still part of the Snyderverse. When, yes. When you would just rip the Band-Aid off and recast them if you didn't want to continue to go down this, this route. Yes. Okay, so. so that brings us to our last point, which is, are we restoring the Snyderverse, Sean? Okay. <laughs> so I say this, and then I get crucified for it, but I'm going to say it again. Oh, boy. It feels like it's it's still here. Like, it's. I know it's not Zack. You know, I know, I know Zack isn't directing these movies, but they're using all of the people that he cast. Um, and so that, to me, means that it's following a timeline that has been started from Man of Steel, you know, and I think all the things that happened in Man of Steel and BVS are canon. Yes, that Justice League, you know, window <laughs> gets it's really just complicated. just real murky, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if Warner Brothers knows what to do about that situation and what to acknowledge and what not to acknowledge. Because even just like the whole mishap with the TV spot, that with Black Adam, you know how they had sure. like a shot from the theatrical cut and then they switched it and it was like, yeah. okay, well then are you acknowledging that this is in the night? Like, I don't think they're thinking about all of those nuances necessarily. No, but. so so they're not restoring the Snyderverse in the sense that Zack had two other movies mapped out and the, those plot lines don't feel like they're going to happen, right? And they're not picking up the baton of some of the things that were left at the end of Snyder Cut, like Lois Lane being pregnant. But they are keeping those same actors. So, no, they're not restoring the Snyderverse, right? Because in a clear cut definition As of it, that of would this mean, moment, <laughs> yes, that right, would mean that, that Justice would mean League taking two... Zach's ideas. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess in a way they're saying 2017 is canon. But like, that's weird. Yeah, that's disgusting. That's that's funny. Funny. Yeah, and two, like, I mean, the end of Zach's arc with. Superman would see Henry Cavill back in the blue and red and gold suit. So part of me is like, I mean, there is a world in which this could just be like, we're just gonna skip past all that stuff and this is years later or like whatever it might be, which could explain why Bingo. he might look different or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a murky situation. But do you think that this leaves the door open? Because like if they do Man of Steel 2, for example, or like a Superman movie, are they gonna call it Man of Steel 2? Like, are they just gonna like try to rebrand it? Like there's a lot of weird questions that I think they're gonna trap themselves in by introducing him. It. Really? You know, I think it would be a little bit similar to Nolan's movies. Like you got Batman Begins and then you got The Dark Knight. And I really wanted the third movie to be called like the Caped Crusader, really, or just something totally different, but not like the Dark Knight Rises. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, like that was shit. That's a shit title. Because <laughs> it would have been really cool if all three of them were in a in a trilogy, but like had totally distinct names, titles. Yeah. yeah, and I think you can do that with you could have Man of Steel and I don't know what the something other titles else would be, but something <laughs> something very clearly Superman related, you know. Mm -hmm. But like it's it's Henry. Very specific. All right. Although I don't know if you saw this. Today, on the day that we're recording, uh, there is a segment of the fan base who is already uh, doing a hashtag boycott Henry Cavill because Why? they say that him going back to work for Warner Brothers without Zack Snyder is a complete betrayal. But and see, here's a question. Does Zack okay. Snyder even want to go work with Warner Brothers? Because from everything he said about that experience, I don't really, and like he's off with Netflix now and has total creative freedom. Like, right. does he even want that? Like, I mean, I know no. we don't know. But... We don't know. <laughs> sure. But from I mean, an outsider's point of view, like, it looks like a shit show. Yeah. Talks about what David Zaslov has done uh, since the major merger has been to sort of reduce costs and to shuttle movies like Batgirl, you know, that are gone. 
And it doesn't seem to be a place where um, creatives are going to be able to go and thrive. So why would Zach, again, leave this freedom that you talked about at Netflix to go back and be micromanaged mm -hmm. uh, in in Warner Brothers if just just to be able to play with these DC toys that they took away from him in the first place? And it doesn't especially make any when sense they're, they're still looking for like their Kevin Feige of DC, mm. like it's clear to me at least that like they still don't really have an overall plan and like thank god for the rock and his producing partners who seem to at least be trying to do something with the through line and getting some stuff on the radar but mm. i mean there's not even really like any leadership that could say like hey we want your vision or we don't and that just again i don't see how it makes any sense for zach to do that but continue okay so they're they're gonna boycott henry cavill well so they say i don't care i don't care i am more curious about how black adam does at the box office than I have been for any film in a really long time. Mm. Because whether it's fair to this one movie or not, it seems like a lot is currently hinging on uh, the future of DC moving forward, which shouldn't be the case. Like they should have a concrete plan in place and they should be hopeful that their movie does well, but they should be knowing what's coming for the immediate future. Like Rock, when I was talking to him in our Junkin interview, was like, there was a time when Black Adam was part of this 10 film slate, you know, and we were at the end of it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, th think how different this story might have been, this movie might have been, if it had followed, you know, a Green Lantern core or... Was uh, there like you know, a New Gods film too? And like all that, this other stuff that's just... Yes. Not, no, that just uh, never that, happened. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, what in do a you way think about, it's... Or sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, it's really funny that we we've talked about, you and I, that it feels like DC broke away from the need for everything to be connected. Mm -hmm. And yet they, every time they take a step away from like, we're doing like, Matt Reeves is doing this over here and The Rock's gonna play Black Adam. They still find a way to be like, yeah, but it's all connected though. Yeah, I remember <laughs> at Comic-Con when in the Shazam trailer, when they showed all those shots of like the Justice League characters, I was like, what are we doing? Like, what is going on? <laughs> you know what I noticed? Nobody panics when things go according to plan even if the plan is horrifying. So talking about like box office, yeah. he's very clearly teasing that we are going to see Henry Cavill Superman. So do you yes. think that they were like worried that Black Adam wasn't gonna be able to sell tickets and that's why they're kind of like letting this be spoiled before it comes out? Like, what do you think about that? Yeah, I do, I do think that that's the case. I haven't seen any traditional tracking of this yet, um, but that has been suggested and it kind of feels accurate because outside of The Rock, like Pierce Brosnan obviously is extremely famous, but like the, the JSA members that they chose are unusual um, because they're not like, damn, I gotta go see that person fill in the blank, that character uh, on screen. So then you have The Rock playing a character that again, not a lot of people probably know because he's not a mainstream DC character. So tracking might be low, but I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that, so Brendan texted me today from school and he asked me if I'd seen Black Adam, which shows how much Brendan pays attention to anything that I've done because I've told him that I interviewed The Rock <laughs> that's and I've hilarious. told him about Black Adam. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't listen to a single oh, thing that have, goes so on in my funny. life. He goes, did you see Black Adam? I said, yeah, I did. Um, he goes, uh, my friends and I are talking about it. Should we go see it? And I was like, yeah, you guys should totally go see it because it's aimed at 14 year old boys, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, well, what did you give it for star ratings? And I was like, well, I didn't give it a very good star rating. But I said, but I'm like a comic book nerd. Like you guys will enjoy it. Just go and 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 watch things blow up. So I think it'll do well, um, even though it's not a good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could see it. I but by well, I'm I'm putting it. I think I'm in like the 75 to 80 range okay. for opening weekend, which I don't know if that's a failure or not. I don't know if that's good. I'm sure that they want over 100 million. But yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, especially compared to something like the Batman that opened earlier this year that's like not connected to that at all. And just to see kind of like what the audience is feeling, especially with this divisive separation between some of the people who want to see Zack's vision and some people who don't. They're already boycotting Henry Cavill. <laughs> and it's they not it's not all years. the Snyder fans. It's a subset, I'm sure. But yeah, it's a mess. and. God, I just wish DC would get it together, but it seems like every week there's something that makes us go, what? I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> yeah, every single Ugh. week. And it's sad because we were supposed to have Shazam Fury of the Gods coming like right behind this too mm -hmm. in December. And and I think it, that could have helped build some real momentum for them. And I understand they had to get that movie out of the way of Avatar 2, like Avatar 2 yeah. is gonna suck up all the oxygen in the room. Yeah. 
But it would have been cool if DC just kept being like, we're really confident in these movies and we're going to keep putting them out so people can come and see them because we're excited about our characters. But yeah, what do you think about the whole thing that like Black Adam is like Shazam's nemesis and like basically yeah. The Rock has been like, oh, well, he's not, not big enough. Like he's like basically <laughs> said without saying like, sorry to yeah. Zachary Levi, but no. Nah. That's kind of true. And it's kind of an insult because it is kind of like we're going to hop over the guy I should be fighting to get to the big one that everybody wants us to see. Is he just scared of me and my family because we're so awesome? Because I get that. Here's the thing that I've mentioned earlier that that's weird to me, though. Like, so Amanda Waller sends the Justice Society to go after Black Adam. And she essentially says something to Dr. Fate, like, well, who's the team? Who are you putting together? And then she says, I have access to other people who, uh, you know, are not from this planet. She sends Superman. But like, I thought Waller only worked with like the Suicide Squad. I thought that she recruited villains. Like, why are good guys working with Amanda Waller? Yeah, somebody said like back, I think it was around Comic-Con when it was like people got footage that she was going to be in Black Adam and everyone was like, yeah. what? I don't know if it, maybe it was like Eric Eisenberg. Somebody in the room in our Comic-Con suite was like, yeah, they're trying to make Waller like the Nick Fury of DC to kind of like tie. And I was like, I get it. But also like, yeah, to your point, like she's in charge of Task Force X. Like why, right. what, or did they explain that at all? Or is she just no. like on the phone? To, okay. <laughs> no, she's just able to like coordinate things with these good guys as well too. Even though that throws out, not that the air cut, you know, is in canon or I don't know what the air cut is at this point, but there's a scene at that one where Bruce, Will uh, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Bruce, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> shows up my head uh <laughs> bruce wayne shows up and says something like hey keep these guys in line or you're gonna have to answer to me sort of deal you know like interesting dc doesn't know what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's not funny just based off of this conversation there's a lot more dc stuff to talk about so sean yes. we might need to start doing weekly videos again if the people watching this want to see that let us know in the comments maybe we can even do a um black adam spoiler review once i've had a chance to see it we should definitely because yeah. i think you and i need to talk freely about that movie okay i want to hear your thoughts oh god i'm like nervous i know what you think <laughs> which yeah. makes me like oh god <laughs> going into it. That's I'll put okay. a link to your spoiler free review in case anybody wants to check that out because that'll be up. Your expectations will have been lowered. You think? All right, so we will be reading the comments down below to find out whether you guys want to hear more from Hannah and I about DC. DC's back. We have Black Adam in theaters. We have a couple other things on the horizon and um, some big news. Once Henry drops, you know, then uh, maybe we'll hear some news about what his guaranteed future will be. So in the meantime, keep it here. Hit subscribe. Turn on your notifications. We're back doing DC content and we want to make sure you guys come and watch every single episode that we do.